We have a couple more rapid fire papers. This is our uh, second. Um, this is being presented from the University of California, Irvine. And the title of the talk is Adjunctive Superior Mesenteric or Portal Venous Reconstruction in the Treatment of Borderline Resectable Pancreatic Adenocarcinoma. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the Vascular and Endovascular Surgery Society for accepting our study for presentation. My name is William Duong, and I will be presenting a study from the University of California, Irvine, Department of Surgery. Our project is entitled Adjunctive Superior Mesenteric Portal Venous Reconstruction in the Treatment of Borderline Resectable Pancreatic Adenocarcinoma. There are no conflicts of interests or relevant financial disclosures. Pancreatic cancer is a leading cause of cancer death with an overall 9% five-year survival rate. Surgery remains the only potential curative therapy. However, most will present with advanced stage disease at diagnosis. Tumors can be distinguished as resectable, borderline resectable, and locally advanced, which are based on vascular involvement. Tumors which involve the superior mesenteric vein portal vein confluence with a less than 180 degree encasement of the common hepatic artery and right hepatic artery are considered borderline resectable, but are at higher risk of perioperative complications and margin positive resection. Multiple studies have been completed with conflicting conclusions regarding the use of vascular reconstruction in treating these tumors. In 2014, Chung et al. completed a single institution study with vascular reconstructions for borderline resectable pancreatic adenocarcinoma undergoing pancreatic odudinectomy and found short-term survival outcomes were not compromised when compared to standard pancreatic odudinectomy. In 2015, Scroy et al. completed another single institution study with similar findings. More recently, in 2019, Jorgensen et al. completed their own retrospective review of Whipple procedures requiring vascular reconstruction and noted a decreased associated survival, citing increased operative time, increased blood loss, leading to increased perioperative complications. We present our single institutional experience in the utility of adjunctive vascular reconstruction for these tumors to assess viability and survival. We completed a single institution retrospective review at a tertiary academic center with high volume pancreatic surgery from 2014 to December 2018. We included patients undergoing either pancreatic odudinectomy or total pancreatectomy with adult patients who had pancreatic adenocarcinoma and resection requiring vascular reconstruction. Our primary outcome was one year survival with a secondary outcome of negative resection margins. Over a five year period, there were 160 pancreatic resections, of which 85 were for pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Portal vein reconstruction was completed in 35, 41.2%, with primary repair and interposition grafting with crowd preserved vein being the most common reconstruction techniques. In the vascular reconstruction group, the median age was 66, with 74.3% male. The majority were stage 2B accounting for 62.9%. Preoperative chemotherapy was administered in 62.9%. One year survival was noted to be 74.3%, with a negative resection margin obtained in 82.9%. There were three thromboses requiring intervention, accounting for 8.6%. In conclusion, this study demonstrates that when surgical treatment is deemed appropriate, adjunctive superior mesenteric vein portal vein resection may further extend opportunity for an R0 resection with comparable survival for stage two tumors. Vascular surgeons are being consulted to participate in these advanced vascular reconstructions with increased frequency and should be familiar with these various reconstruction techniques. Thank you for your attention and your time. Well, thank you for that very interesting talk. I think these are really difficult cases. And um, a lot of times when you have your general surgeons and you're working with them, there's this question of, can we do this? Can we not do this? And, and really looking at it in the case. I'd like for you to chat a little bit about the decision-making intraoperative. You know, you have 35 that had a 
um, resection and had a reconstruction, but were there other patients that were considered to be potentially resectable and you did not do that resection and why? Um, yeah, thank you for that question. I think that the majority of these patients are seen and discussed in a multidisciplinary tumor board where we kind of go over their imaging, uh, talk about resectability um, and what them. A small percentage are intraoperative consults where they're found to be more involved and in, they were thought to be um, involving the portal vein, like there was a clear plane, and then there's an intraoperative vascular consults. Um, and uh, our vascular surgeons are adept enough to where they can come into the OR and help dissect and potentially do a primary repair or resection with um, uh, primary anastomosis. Uh, Did I break off a little bit there? You did, but you're back if you want to continue or we can move forward. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think, uh, did I answer your question? I, I feel like I... I think that you did. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your selection of conduit using cryopreserved um, vessel in these particular cases. Yeah, I think it's very much an attending dependent decision. Uh, I've seen or, or read in the literature, sometimes people will harvest staphnus or even juggler vein. Um, but typically in these long cases, I think our, um, our surgeons prefer to use cryofemoral vein um, and have that ready when they think they'll need it. Um, we, we typically don't, don't harvest staphnus or, or juggler. Have you had any issues with patency of those long-term and how long do you keep these patients on anticoagulation after the procedure? That's a good question. I think for the cryo veins uh, in a position grafting, they, they do go um, home and coagulation. However, um, we, we monitor them pretty frequently. I think there is oftentimes a 30 day uh, CT scan or an ultrasound to follow up. Uh, and then at some point, uh, I think that um, uh, the, the anticoagulation is no longer necessary. I think for uh, long-term anticoagulation, unless there's a thrombosis or something that deems it necessary. Yeah, I must admit, I would be somewhat hesitant to use cryopreserved graft, I think, in these cases, because my concern would be if it would go down, I, I, my own preference is to use a femoral vein, um, superficial femoral vein, most of the time, so. Yeah, um, but at the one-year mark, we've had uh, three thromboses, um, which are required um, anticoagulation out of the, uh, the, the nine that, that used um, bio. Did you notice any difference in the outcomes for those patients with the, um, that had a thrombosis? Um, since we only looked at one year survival, uh, we didn't really notice a difference in outcome, um, given that our survival was um, greater than 70%, uh, which is comparable to patients that, that don't undergo a vascular reconstruction. We do have one question that has come in, and uh, this question comes from Dr. Grog again and asking about, uh, does this include patients that undergo just distal pancreatectomy, or is this all uh, Whipple procedures? Yeah, so we only included all Whipple procedures. Any um, distal pancreatectomies, uh, we would typically expect them to be medial to the, to the uh, portal veins, superior mesenteric vein confluence. Well, I think this was a very nice talk and very nicely presented. Thank you very much.